This is the second video in a series of videos by the USA Racewalking Foundation and Racewalk.com to help educate racewalking judges. This clip shows how the new penalty zone operates. You can also see our new improved racewalking technique applied to the models. Please consider to make a donation to the USA Racewalking Foundation to help us with the cost of the assets that we must purchase to bring our scenes to life. Thanks for the consideration. In this video, we will observe the operation of the racewalking penalty zone, a relatively new addition to the racewalking competitions with the goal of decreasing the number of disqualifications. You will be the penalty zone coordinator. You will have an assistant. Your role is to run the penalty zone operation and to keep records of the actions taken by you and your assistant. In this situation, the penalty zone is next to the course and is delineated by cones creating a 10 meter by 3 meter rectangle. There is a marked entrance and exit, and the penalty zone coordinator's assistant waits for those who receive time penalties near the entrance. The penalty zone coordinator will maintain records of the entry and exit of walkers in the penalty zone by completing a penalty zone timesheet shown here. Before the race begins, we should complete the information on the top. We will fill in the date, competition start time, the competition name, the distance, whether the race is male, female, or both, the age group, and the penalty time. The event is the women's 20K walk. The race begins at 8.01 a.m., and the penalty time is 2 minutes. The time of day is now 8.49 a.m. Walkers 3 and 6 come by walking within the definition of race walking. They are followed closely by number 4, who is also walking appropriately. Walkers 1 and 7 are 2 minutes behind the lead pack. They are also walking legally. As the penalty zone coordinator, you are notified by the recorder that walker number 4 has received a third red card for loss of contact. As you can see, walker number 4 has received three red cards from three different judges for loss of contact. Rather than being disqualified, number 4 will serve a time penalty in the penalty zone set up next to the DQ board. The recorder alerts the penalty zone coordinator to look for walker number 4 and tells the penalty zone coordinator's assistant to stop number four when she passes by again and put her in the penalty zone. Walker number four is directed into the penalty zone by the penalty zone coordinator's assistant for two minutes. Since this is a 20K race, walker number four's penalty time is two minutes. For races 5K or less, the penalty is 30 seconds. For a 10K, it's 60 seconds. For longer races, the penalty is 30 seconds for each 5K. The penalty starts when the walker enters the penalty zone. When in the penalty zone, walkers may walk normally, jog, race walk, stand still, and stretch with bent legs. They are not judged in the penalty zone. They may talk with their coach, but they may not take refreshments or use toilet facilities. Taking refreshments and using toilets is done on the athlete's time as they're racing. With 10 seconds to go, the penalty zone assistant shows walker number 4 a 10 second paddle, indicating that she may leave the zone when the 10 second notice is finished. Walker number 4 is allowed to leave the penalty zone and is now 2 minutes behind the leaders. If she receives a fourth red card from another judge, she will be disqualified. The penalty zone coordinator completes the first row of the penalty zone sheet by writing bib number 4 and the walker's name, as well as the hip number, which is 4, the countdown watch ID, which in this case is A, the time of day she entered, and the time of day she exited the penalty zone, which is 8.58 and 9 o'clock respectively. Walker number two had two red cards on the DQ board, one for loss of contact and one for bent knees. Two more red cards from different judges have come in, both for bent knees. 
the chief judge's assistant will look for walker number two to show her the red paddle. Walker number two is disqualified after receiving four red cards. Since the last two cards have come in before number two could spend time in the penalty zone, she does not go to the penalty zone and is disqualified for receiving four cards. This action will not be noted on the penalty zone timesheet. The leaders of the race come by one last time as they head to the finish line. Then, a third red card gets posted on the DQ board for walker number three. The chief judge's assistant alerts you to place number three in the penalty zone for two minutes. However, walker number three will not pass by you again. Since walker number three will not be able to serve the time penalty, two minutes for a 20k will be added to her finishing time. Fill out the post-finish penalty sections of the penalty zone timesheet, noting a two-minute penalty will be added. It is advisable to alert the finish line of the penalty in a timely fashion, perhaps by alerting the referee or chief racewalking judge, who will inform the chief finish judge on number three's time penalty. Finally, make sure the penalty zone coordinator, the penalty zone coordinator's assistant, and the chief judge sign the timesheet. Many thanks go to Ron Daniel, Marianne Daniel, Brian Hanley, Diane Graham Henry, Patricia Hanna, David Harriman, Alex Price, Dan Pierce, Ian Watley, and Reggie Weisglass. A special thanks to Michael Seralta, who assisted us with getting footage of elite racewalkers to base our models upon. We would also like to thank those that financially supported us, as well as those that gave their feedback, and my dad's 3D tutor, Jay Versilius.